a very good afternoon to all today once again we are here with the third session of 8 days theme based webinar series on national education policy 2020 celebrating its first year of launch we are indeed overwhelmed to see the encouraging participation of students and academicians who are the key takers of the policy it is said the interaction of knowledge and skill with experience is key to learning the theme of today's session is skill entrepreneurship and employability challenges and opportunities we have with us dr shaboni malik lecturer department of computer science and engineering to deliberate on the theme a post graduate from birla institute of technology mesra she has completed her doctorate in computer science and engineering from motilal nehru national institute of technology allahabad in the year 2014 she has to her credit over 20 research publication in various reputed national and international journals in addition to her academics she is holding the responsibilities of coordinator iqac community radio station project chairperson egp and startup cell spoc swayam and ptl courses among others she has been nominated as an expert mentor for startup and entrepreneurs by the department of industries andaman and nicobar administration for building a robust startup ecosystem it will not be out of place to mention that she has been actively involved in preparation of state higher education plan shep under rusa mhrd scheme for andaman and nicobar administration government of india and also deliberating on the national education policy 2020 for preparing road map for its implementation her area of interest are operating system database management system distributed systems and data analytics dr shaboni malik thank you ma'am i really feel humble for the kind and nice introduction you have given so friends today you are here for the third session of eight days theme based webinar series on national education policy 2020 the education system in india has appeared to be as one of the greatest in the world in terms of the number of engineering colleges and the student enrollment however the education system has been impeded by the challenges of access and quality the contemporary resources in the country are unable to meet meet the challenges and demands of the ever changing learning landscape and this throws a wide range of opportunities for the education providers and yes this is the theme of today's topic skill entrepreneurship employability challenges and opportunities if we see the indian skill survey report in the year 2019 not even 50% of the student graduates were employable this uh, it becomes all the more alarming when we see the trend over the past 3 years in 2020 46.2% of the students were employable whereas in, in the year 2020 21 it was decreased it, it has decreased and it is only 45.9% so the situation becomes all the more alarming that yes where is the gap the gap between the academia and the industry requirement the skill gap so i'll go to the next slide if you see this slide and if i show you flip art you tell me and i forget you teach me and i remember involve me i learn so this is the typical teaching learning scenario what we see only listening to the class lectures students hardly remember you teach them with some examples they remember it for some time and if you involve these students for in for the activity for an engaged learning the students actually learn and honestly forgetting is instantaneous remembering is momentary and learning is a lifelong activity so the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write however who cannot learn unlearn and relearn that means the dynamism that has come into the educational sector the requirement that has been changing ever with the technology becoming obsolete almost every week or every day so you have to keep the pace to keep yourself abreast with the technological development the market requirement and the changing learning landscape so the contents for today's presentation 
would be the different facets of learning, how the education system has to be realigned with the NEP, the present scenario of the skill and the education, the skill paradigm, the skill and employability, entrepreneurship, the entrepreneur learning, and the different challenges and opportunities what we face. So going to the next slide, the different facets of learning. If we see this cycle or this disk, wherein I have divided the disk into three segments, the 21st century learner will have three main components to make the education complete, the knowledge, the skill, and the character. The knowledge is what you know and understand. The skill is how you know and what you know and how will you convert it into action. The character is how you behave when you're equipped with the knowledge and skill. And all these three components when you're equipped, then comes the meta learning, the meta cognitive aspect of it. If I give you an example, if I take Radnish sir's example, what he discussed yesterday, like if you have the knowledge of nuclear fission, the quantum physics, and you know how to prepare a bomb, that's the knowledge you have. But converting it to an action and you make a bomb is what is the skill. But what is the character? What is the purpose you're using the detonator for? Are you using it as a human site or you're using it for some constructive industrial application? That is your character. That is what Swami Vivekananda has told that education has to be man making and character building. It is not only a load of knowledge you acquire and keep it in the book and actually you do not convert it to the action that actually develops the society that shows your character. And the meta learning would be, suppose you have the skill of bomb making and you are using it for a constructive purpose. How with that knowledge you can use that knowledge or skill for another application. Suppose you know driving a car is a knowledge. You know you are actually driving a car is the skill. You are following the traffic rules and keeping the roads safe with the traffic. That's a character. And with the knowledge of driving, how can you convert that knowledge and skill to drive another vehicle? Probably with the meta learning aspects. So all these three components, when in complete respect, forms the learning complete and a lifelong. So when you talk about realigning the education system with the NEP, there are three important components, making the learner a holistic learn, a learning activity, reducing the curriculum content and experiencing experiential learning for that matter. So when I talk about holistic development of learners, the key overall thrust of curriculum and pedagogy is to reform across all these stages that the education system should be complete, should be real understanding towards real learning, how to learn and not the rote learning that has been followed nowadays. The aim of education is not only cognitive, but also building the character, as I have told you in the last slide. Reducing the curriculum content to enhance the essential learning, to enhance or to instill critical learning amongst the students, to make more space for more holistic inquiry-based learning, discovery-based learning, and more into discussion-based or analysis-based learning is what is the reducing curriculum content from essential learning to critical thinking. Experiential learning is more engaged storytelling based sports activity involved learning earlier we used to say extracurricular activity but nowadays the term has come co-curricular that means the curricular and the co-curricular activities has to go in parallel to make the system experience the learning what they have in the class what they have in the institute so that when they move from the educational environment to the real world actually it has to make them prepare for the real world so a transactional shift has to happen from the classroom to the real world that actually will make the learning experiential. So if we see the present scenario, India comes second when it comes to skill shortage as a percentage of firms with 10 or more employees. So Japan comes the first as the young population in Japan is really less. Whereas in contrast, India is the highest young population still we come second when we say about the skill shortage. So this is actually the key what PM Modi has been taking that skill development of the youth is much required for the national improvement and to make the country Atmanir Bhar Bharat. He said that skills teach us what, how a work can be done in the real form. So talking recently in, in a Skill India uh, mission on July 15th, he said that education and skill development should be a prime focus sector. 
and Skill India Mission, Make in India, Atmanirbhar Bharat, PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana are such initiatives that is actually moving very strong in this area wherein skill has become very, very important to be interweaved with the education system so that we make the youth ready for the industry. Looking at the uh, scenario statistics again, if I see, if I tell you that India has the largest working population, about 62% of the country's population is in the age group of 15 to 59, wherein 54% is below 25 years. And when we see that the number of workers that will enter the Indian working population will be 12.7 million per year. But the skill training capacity of the country still is 3 million per year. And it is expected that by 2023, 59 million people of the age group 15 to 30 will be entering the Indian market. So see the gap between the skill required, skilled the workforce and the amount of workforce that will be entering. So this gap of 3 million per year training capability and 59 million entering by 2023 makes it all the more important that skill development of the youth and interweaving or, or instilling it right from the school level to the higher education level is very much required for making the youth industry ready, employable, in contrast to the situation today, we say that not even 50% of the passing out graduates are employable in the industry. So when we look into the key principles of national education policy, we see there are eight key factors that the national education policy is concentrating upon. But when we talk about skill development, employability, entrepreneurship, the aspect number four to eight becomes very, very important. We as an academician, we as an educational institution, talking about both the school and higher education level, using of technology, emphasizing learning from the understanding point of view, no rote learning, unique capabilities, identifying the unique capabilities that are there in the, the students. It is said that education is the manifestation of the qualities that are already within men. So every child is equipped with special capabilities, innate skills that needs to be identified, that needs to be discovered and polished so that a, t a, a student not only an engineer or a doctor, whatever skill he has, has to be complete, has to be comprehensively developed by the academicians, by the academic institutions, by giving them proper environment so that when they go out, they are employable in the market, they can actually live their career with success. So continuous review of what is happening, regular assessment, critical thinking, decision-making power amongst these students, all these capabilities have to be fostered by the academic institution so as to make them career ready or rather than I would say life ready. Next. If I see the skill paradigm as I was discussing, I have divided the skill paradigm into four facets. First is the core subjects, what they learn in their curriculum, the pedagogy, what is transacted in the uh, education system. Then the information media and technological skills, which has become very, very important nowadays. So you have to have the ICT equipped with you. You have to be socially present and judiciously use the social media for, uh, I mean, wide publicity of the contents, for wide publicity of the things, what you do or what you're good at. The technology skills in the emerging sectors you should be equipped with. Then the learning and innovation skills. You should be innovative in nature. You just cannot be in the industry or in the market by the conventional paradigm or mindset what you have. You have to have an innovative mindset that will actually make you kick off from there. Then the life and career skills, very, very important. The cross-cultural attitude, the productivity, the leadership, the management, all these skills are very, very essential in the 21st century learner and a passing on graduate to make them sustain in the society. And the down, uh, what I have given, the standards and assessment, the curriculum and instruction, professional development activities, and the learning environments are the support system that will make the youth instill or equip them with, with all this skill that is required in this 21st century. So coming to the employability, skill, and entrepreneurship. So what comes when you study, when you go into academics, there's always a dream that you, you will work, you will, you will be successful in your career, you'll have a successful job, you'll be working in some MNC or some industry or, or you're a successful engineer, doctor, an, an artist or whatever. So 
two aspects when you say a rollout map is drawn for a student when you when he or she is entering into an education system that is employability and the second is entrepreneurship so i would say i mean not even five years or so five years back we used to see that entrepreneurship was in a silo and education system was was a parallel line so we never used to think that yes students can be converted into entrepreneurs i mean nowadays the the trust is given that you are more a job provider than a job seeker so earlier mindset was yes my my son or my daughter will be a government job holder or then the mindset came that yes my daughter my son will be working in an mnc but nowadays the students are also enthusiastic and energetic about that i will be an entrepreneur i'll be a successful businessman in the industry which gives boost to the economy of the islands where you dwell or or with whichever state you are in and which will also boost up the country's economy you will not only be an employee but rather you will be an employer of a number of people so that is required that mindset has to be changed that paradigm has to be shifted from only employable or only employee oriented approach to an entrepreneurial approach so what are the skills required so when i talk about employability the interpersonal communication the technical skills what you acquire even in school and in your college the professional behavior what you require and the work ethics so when you talk about entrepreneurship the first thing what i said is you have to be innovative you have to be creative in thinking until and unless you have an idea you are nowhere you cannot think of an entrepreneurial mindset you have to have a critical thinking creative thinking as a human being then the technical skills what are required to convert that idea into action the leadership capability of course is you will be a job provider so in that case you have to lead an organization the risk taking i mean this is a very very important skill that is required for being an entrepreneur risk taking it has been seen that normally government servants or the employed persons are not very much risk takers they are afraid oh if i invest in this i i may not get the returns but as an entrepreneur you hardly will feel that oh whatever whatever will be my first year profit let it go but let me just invest let me venture into so that risk taking attitude is seen mostly in the entrepreneurial mindset so we as teachers we as academicians has to tap that potential that yes what is my students mindset how can we channelize the skills or the the uh, the talents that they have what is the thinking of my student that we have to understand and that can only be done when we give them a holistic environment to grow to develop just imbibing them onto loads of academic contents by rote learning going into the exam getting results will not actually make the output come so we have to understand that yes what my students are into what how their efforts can be channelized and what is their role in the society so that we have to understand accordingly we have to channelize their their efforts and develop them into the right individual that can be an asset to the society so if we compare both the employability and the entrepreneurship the technical skills is a must where both as an employee you require to be employed in the industry and as an entrepreneur you would require to convert your idea into action so the so skill is one thing that is mandated for both an entrepreneur as well as employable mindset so career skilling and competency so when i talk about skill and competency let me tell you so what is the difference between skill and competency skills are specific learned activities and when you talk about that skill so this will give you to perform a job well but when you talk about competencies competencies on the other hand are person's knowledge and behavior that lead them to a successful venture be it a job or in entrepreneurship so you have to have the skill convert the skills to competencies so that you are rightly absorbed in the industry successfully so that is what is career skilling and competence you have to learn the things as a skill and then you have to be competent enough to to take that skill to a level so that you are successfully executing what you are into so that is the difference between skilling and competency next slide please so when i talk about the challenges what are the challenges that is actually impeding or acting as a hindrance for converting this that why why there is a gap between the academia and the industry so the the first thing 
as a teacher, we understand that there is a gap in classroom teaching and the practical application that is required in the industry. So the classroom teaching, since we are still following the earlier policy and we're just moving into the new national education policy, wherein we see that the academic loads are very much wherein the students hardly get time to practice, to research on, or, or to, to use their entrepreneurial mindset, to use their critical, critical thinking in engaging activities in more and more projects. So they are so much loaded with the curriculum content that it, it uh, hardly leaves any time for such, such learning. So there is a gap between the classroom teaching, the, the curriculum is the curriculum is almost 10, 15 years old, which is almost outdated in the market today, being an affiliated system and most of the colleges, I'm just not talking about our, most of the colleges being under the affiliated umbrella, they are bound to follow the curriculum that is being given by the affiliating body. So uh, curriculums are not updated quite often as per the industry requirements. So there is a huge, huge gap between the classroom teaching what we deliver and the practical requirement that is required in the market or industry. So that becomes the biggest challenge for us to make our student industry ready. Then the second is shortage of relevant skills. Last one is acute shortage of skilled workforce. See what I, what is the difference between these two points? What I have mentioned is. When I say shortage of relevant skills, you might have certain skills, but you're not into the right sector. So that has to be identified, tapped and channelized to the right direction. So whatever skill is required, probably in the computer science industry, you as a computer science graduate, since the education system at present is so much scattered in silos that you are very, very rigid and restricted to one discipline. Whereas in today's world, the education system is highly, highly multidisciplinary in nature, which is not catered by the present education system, what we are following. So a, student, a, a candidate who is going into the industry might have skill, but not the right skill what is required in the industry or in the area which he, is, he or she is in placed in. So shortage of relevant skill is one big impeding factor, which is a challenge for the employability and the entrepreneurial capabilities of the students. The next is the lower female participation. See, uh, when we see the Indian labor force, 395.2 million of the out of uh, this workforce, only 91.6 million are women. So in the technical space, particularly when we see absence of residential provisions, female trainees, transportation facilities, security facilities, all those things are actually hindering the participation of women in the job sector or or you can say the entrepreneurial sector so all these things has to be taken care of when we say the equity as ashwari madam has covered in the first session equity and inclusion so gender equity is one big thing that has to be uh, i mean uh, really worked upon to see that the market is balanced to see that there is equal number of female participation in the industry because one female educated is one family educated. So the female participation actually builds up a chain of participation in the market sector. So very, very important is that we see to it that provisions, facilities and amenities are made so that you attract even female participation in the market and so that the, the gap that is there in the gender equity is filled up. And then the last one is acute, uh, the last challenge what I have identified is acute shortage of skilled workforce. I mean, uh, the, the NASCOM predicts that there is almost 8 lakhs of jobs by 2021 that is there, but they, they have dearth of technical people who have these skills, particularly in AI, ML, cloud computing and all. So there are, we say that there are no jobs, but there are job avenues but we hardly have skilled technical workforce to serve into that. And this is one sector. There might be many sectors so like robotic, production, manufacturing, where specific skill sets might be required, but you hardly find people. The, probably due to the mindset or due to the skill they have not acquired or due to the facilities, probably the, the, the take home salaries, what they get. So all these, these serves as the, as the challenges for motivating the youth for working towards the skilled activity and, and the entrepreneurial mindset. So it brings up a plethora of opportunities when we see these challenges. First is the raising the national standard of education. 
implementing outcome based competency based learning approach rather than only percentage or scoring based approaches whatever we we study we make them learn in the educational environment that has to be outcome oriented i mean it is not only the objective earlier we used to follow an objective based education when this is the objective what they are studying but how do you assess that yes that objective is met or not it is only with the outcome it is only with the examination reforms it is only with the restructuring of the entire transactional mechanism in the academics that will actually ensure that yes you are following an outcome based approach so you have to have a standard national standard of education that is uniform all across that gives a branding to the student irrespective of whichever college or whichever school you are coming in so that competency based learning outcome based learning has to have take has to take the place of the routine rote learning and the normal score based learning what we are following then the next opportunity is accreditation and global learning if you are from an nba accredited college if your program is nba accredited you are recognized internationally as per the list of washington record institutes so that gives a big brand value to your products that is coming into the market so that has to come and all the institutes should move into the accreditation accreditation policy and accreditation criteria of the new education system so that is one big opportunity that the institute should move in next is the industry academic leadership setting up of industry oriented labs having mentoring facilities with the industry so that they 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 find the gaps like whatever is the gap in the curriculum which you are not delivering your your curriculum is not delivering in that case that industry mentoring industry association industry associated labs will actually fill that gap to find out the curriculum gap and fill in that next offering industry specific online trainings because just i mean few days ago honorable prime minister has said that education should not or learning should not stop while you are earning I and mean, that's a catch line the prime minister has given the learning should not stop while you are earning so now there is ample opportunities to be online i mean i would rather say that this pandemic has been a blessing in disguise for shifting us from the normal offline mode to online mode giving lot of opportunities to the learners sitting at their home and learning through online mode from premier institutes so from premier institutes premier organizations so there are umpteen number of certified courses on swayam portal like uh, run by the ministry nascom certified courses so, and other courses that is run even by the government of india for making students learn the gaps that they have in the curriculum when they cannot move out of their homes or the the earning population the population who who's a working group where they cannot leave their office hours and and go to study something so they can take those courses while they are at home and or while they are not working and finish those certifications to reskill them i would say to reskill them skilling and reskilling as i was telling in that quote in the second slide probably learning relearning and unlearning so all these three activities has to be there together to make yourself stand in the ever changing market today as a 21st century learner then promoting the adoption of new technologies you are nowhere if you are not adopting or if you are not flexible with the technology that is ever changing so you have to equip yourself with the ever changing technology that is happening so and the sooner is better like nokia was one big market in, in the tele in the mobile phone industry but nokia nokia was nowhere when samsung and apple has taken over why because it, they they adapted to the technological change whereas nokia resisted so that's how you'll be ruled out from the market if you're not changing with the changing technology so you have to adapt yourself with the ever changing technology and equip yourself the faster the better so, so the technologies like ai ai ml blockchain ar vr all these these are emerging future skill technologies that students should certainly take up and as i've said that the education system has become all the more multidisciplinary so whichever discipline you are coming from you have to have the knowledge of these disciplines if you you have to sustain today in the industry and the last but not the least would be providing incubation support the national innovation and startup policy by the government of india has mandated that heis should take up the startup and the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the academic institution itself so it has been become it has become mandatory that 
you set up incubation facilities in the academia so that the ideas that that the students have they can take to the lab to the state of the art lab so that they convert their ideas into proof of concept which can be incubated in the lab and then converted to startup and then to scale up so this will actually foster an ecosystem from the higher education institution itself so that then they take up that idea that proof of concept that tested idea in the lab to a startup and then foster it into an entrepreneurial ecosystem so this slide at least shows the new education policy is now bifurcated as 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 the first five is for the foundational stage the next three is for the preparatory stage the next three years for the middle stage and the next four years for the secondary education stage so this diagram actually shows what are the various skill sets that the students should have both when they are finishing the eighth grade so eighth grade has been has given as one has been given as one benchmark for the students then the 12th grade and then the higher education so the finishing school see how the education system scenario paradigm has now shifted earlier we used to say 10, 10th and 12th, but now it has gone down. The 8th, class 8 there, because there are many school dropouts, many school pass outs rather, who are only 8th pass, but not employable in the market. Such labors are not required in the market because they are not skilled. So skilling them right away at the right age, so that even if they're not able to pursue their higher studies, they are still employable in the market. So that mindset has to go and has been given by the national education policy and if implemented, so probably by 2030, we should be able to achieve this, that if an eighth will also be a finishing school, 10th will also be a finishing school, 12th will also be a finishing school, and the higher education is always there. So even the flexibility, the multi-point entry and multi-point exit, that flexibility has to have there, has to be there right from the school level, as well as in the higher education level. In higher education also, if you are leaving early, you can be a, vocational uh, certificate holder then if you are living at, at a certain advanced stage you can be a diploma holder then if you are living at, at after four years you can be a degree honors holder so that multi-point entry and exit system will actually make these the students uh, enter into the education system more flexibly flexibly with always a certificate in hand so that they are employable Earlier, they used to say that if a student leaves in the in between, say after three years or two years, while they are pursuing the degree program, they are nowhere because they have, they do not have a particular certificate in their hand to be employable. So that flexibility has come. So this particular new education, national education policy, have given the flexibility in the hands of the students. Yes, education is for all. All are included and. It has to be uniform all across. So everybody should be there empowered with a certain educational finishing school certificate so that they are employable in the market. We're coming to the entrepreneurial mindset. I, I thought, let me share this slide with you. Converting societal challenges to entrepreneurial opportunities. As an entrepreneur, you have to have an idea. Where do you get that idea from? A safety pin is a patented product because when, when people use that pin with, with a bareheaded pin and when the pin was used on babies or, or say pinning your, your wearable clothes, then it used to hurt the person who is wearing that pin. Then a safety component was brought into the, that pin wherein it was felt that this particular safety pin will give a safety point of view to the person who is using that safety pin. So that it's a, it's a small product. A safety pin is a very, very small product, but a patented product. So that idea has to come. And idea always comes from the problem. Problem prevails in the society. You have to do a market research. I'm talking about the first icon. I hope everybody understands and knows this icon. That's the Ola cabs. What is the problem? Whenever you, you used to go to a taxi driver to stop a taxi, you get a rude behavior. No, abhi nahi chalenge. Abhi time nahi hai. So you used to have always a pain. You keep waiting. But nowadays, you just give a call. You just tap on your mobile phone and the taxi comes to you. What is the problem? They have identified the rude behavior of the taxi drivers. Now, Ola driver comes to you. They say, good morning, madam. Oh, how was the drive? How did you find the drive? Thank you. 
we, uh, we shall look forward to serve you again. So that feedback loop. So the features, the ratings that we have incorporated in it and the benefit of what has come is the problem was rude behavior. Now the benefit is humble and the greetings you receive and you feel always happy to, to have greetings to, to listen to a welcome and thank you. So that was the problem that was identified. A small problem, a small problem with a human touch, a solution has come and that has become a damn success. And that's a unicorn company in the India now. The next about the Portia, uh, um, online nurse booking app. Wherein, when you leave your old parents, when you move to your workplace, they're left all alone. So in case of emergency, if, they, if you need to attend to your old people, old parents, old seniors, then you can have this app to book nurses online so that you feel rest assured that yes, they are taken care of when you're not there at home. Similarly, another example, what I have quoted is the time and hassle free to the big basket, the online big basket. What was the problem? You go to the vegetable market, I mean, you have to find time, then you bargain because bargaining is, is our right. We bargain in the market to buy vegetables, then we come back. I mean, the freshness is, is one, the freshness of the vegetables and fruits was one, one big factor. So now you in, in a very busy world, you hardly find time to go to the vegetable market and buy. In just a click, you place orders and the delivery is at your doorstep. So you save your time and energy. So the problems identified in the society. Then small mini PC, small portable PC, you carry anywhere and you feel happy about the cooling effect, what you get. So, and the last, uh, last example, what I have quoted is, I mean, I hope every student might have identified it. That's the Instagram logo. I mean, this survey was done in the I mean, young population when they were really uh, conscious about their looks. How am I looking? Oh, I should look grand. I should feel great. That gives me immense motivation and energy throughout the day. So immediately, so what, what features does Instagram have? The, the editing, the filters, the followers. So all these features, they have identified that the young population, they were craving for all these things. So this, I mean, it hardly has any materialistic utility, but the immense happiness that they give to the youth population has really made this Instagram a hit app. So all these problems have to, have to be identified. And how do you identify the problems? You have to do a market research. So the market research, identifying the problem and put yourself in the shoes of the problem who is facing the problem. You have to put yourself in that shoes to understand that what exactly is the problem. And then just identifying the problem is not enough. Convert it to a prototype, it to an action. So that until and unless you have the prototype in hand, your investors will not be keen to invest on you. So you have to have an idea. Idea will come to the problem. Problem should have a solution. You can have multiple solutions so that you identify the features and the benefits, convert it to a proof of concept or prototype, and then try to identify the investors who can invest upon your idea so that you convert it into a startup. And Government of India is strongly supporting the startup for almost seven to 10 years with free I mean, income tax exemption for first three years. So you have to uh, have an idea, convert it into a business, business model, your banks are also giving you loans for uh, this uh, startup ideas. And then you have to register your idea in the Startup India portal for DPIIT registration. Let me tell you, if your startup is not DPIIT registers, registered, you will not have the fiscal benefits that is given by the government. So you have to have an idea, identify the problem, convert it to a prototype, a proof of concept, frame a business model out of it, and then present it into the Startup India portal. So. The, the process you have to follow whatever is the process in the government of india startup india portal and based on that if your startup idea gets registered you will get a dpiit registration number so once you get the dpiit registered registration number you are a formal startup registered with the government of india and then you can realize all the fiscal benefits that has been given and for us we are shortly starting up an incubation center in the college. So if the students have, I mean, the grant has been given by the Andaman Nicobar administration and the institute will be setting up an Andaman Nicobar incubation center in the, in the campus itself uh, on the areas data science, AR, VR and IoT. So any student who have an idea can come to the lab, convert into a proof of concept so that it can be taken up to a startup facility. So education, 
has but one main purpose to prepare students for the real world it's not the rote learning it's not the bookish learning what you have you keep it into your bag and you just dump it at your home you have to have a real learner for a sustained lifelong learning so education has to prepare the students for the real world so we as an academician has to has to has to shoulder the responsibility very big to change the learning system to change the education system to befit the current scenario and to adapt to the changing learning paradigm so that's what my presentation was so thank you and i'm open for questions if there are any so if there are any questions with the students that if you have an idea how can you convert it what are the skills required what if there are any sensitization programs that are going on we have been working really strongly to promote the startup ecosystem in these islands and andaman chamber of commerce particularly with the local relevance andaman chamber of commerce department of industries and it co is working in tandem with invest india we are taking the mentorship of iit madras csi csir siri entrepreneurship development institute of india ahmedabad so all these institutions are strongly supporting us in promoting the startup environment so i would request these students to come up with the idea if they have any try to take it to the lab convert it to action and then convert it to a startup you have to have a job providing mindset rather than a job seeking mindset so that will actually boost your family boost the island's economy as well as you'll be a contributor to the national economy at large so there is a team iic in institute innovation council working on the campus will be supporting you in all respect so your questions will be well welcome so if there are no questions then let me formally finish this session so i would like to especially thank all people who's making this entire event possible i would thank you all the participants who have been really patient enough to join the session every day today we are on to the third session and tomorrow we'll be having a session effect of national education policy on youth empowerment and sports development the session will be taken by mr satish kumar assistant director sports so he will be talking about how the youth will be affected and empowered with the new national education policy in place by from the school education to the higher education so thank you namaskar